Here at JPL today, we're celebrating Voyager's glorious past. But here's Carl Sagan to tell us a little about what Voyager's future might hold. Neptune is Voyager's last port of call. There are no more planets beyond Neptune, at least in this solar system. But Voyager's work is far from done. For example, a few months from now, it has the opportunity to look back over its shoulder and photograph many of the planets in the solar system, including some of its previous ports of call. In one opportunity next March, the planets will be spread out like jewels on velvet. Saturn and Jupiter over there to the right of the sun. To the left of the sun, you can see Mars. That's the red one. And Venus. And then over there at the extreme left, you see that little blue dot? That's us. That's the Earth. That's home. A tiny point of light set against the background spangle of the Milky Way. If photographs were taken at much greater distances, the Earth would become fainter and fainter until lost altogether. Long after the last pictures are taken, long after the radioactive power source runs down and Voyager can no longer call home, long after she's broken entirely free of the gravitational shackles that bind her to the sun, the spacecraft will press on at a million miles a day. Nothing can stop her. About 20,000 years from now, she's destined to complete her long goodbye to the solar system and make for the open sea of interstellar space. Only then will phase two of her mission begin. It was known from the start that the Voyager spacecraft would leave the solar system. It was destined to wander forever in the dark between the stars. So NASA invited a group of us to design a message to be affixed to the spacecraft. The message was intended for any interstellar spacefaring civilization which might one day encounter Voyager. As each of the two Voyagers left Earth for the planets and the stars, it took with it this message, a phonograph record encased in a golden mirrored jacket. The record contains greetings in 59 human languages Hello from the children of planet and one Earth. whale language. A 12 minute sound essay of the evolution of life on Earth, 118 pictures and 90 minutes of music, the Earth's greatest hits, East and West, classical and folk, including a Navajo night chant, a pygmy girl's initiation song, a Japanese shakuhachi piece, Bach, Beethoven, and Chuck Berry singing Johnny Be Good. Space is so empty that there's virtually no chance that Voyager will ever enter another solar system, even if every star in the sky is accompanied by planets. The instructions on the record jacket written in scientific hieroglyphics, can be read and the contents of the record understood only if alien beings sometime in the remote future find Voyager in the depths of interstellar space. Escaping from the sun, the Voyagers will circle the center of the Milky Way galaxy forever. And forever is a very long time. So maybe Voyager will, in the far future, be approached by some unimaginably alien civilization. They would wonder what creatures had sent this primitive craft. Being much better scientists and engineers than we, otherwise they'd never find the spacecraft, they would have no difficulty decoding the record cover, examining the pictures, listening to the sounds and music. not know how much they would understand. Au-dessus des étangs, au-dessus des vallées, des montagnes,
they would recognize the tentativeness of our society, the mismatch between our technology and our wisdom. Had we destroyed ourselves since launching Voyager, they would wonder, or had we gone on to greater things? Or perhaps the record will never be intercepted. And then, when humans have become extinct or evolved into other beings, when everything we know and love is gone, when even the continents have unrecognizably changed, indeed, when the Earth itself is reduced by the sun's evolution to a charred cinder, Voyager will fly on. <laughs>